Tapering is an extremely important part of the preparation towards an event, but how much should you taper? Watch on as we discuss this today. Hey, how's it going? I'm Will from Iron Will Multisport Australia, your place to find tips, tricks and experience in triathlon, multisport and endurance events and training. Over this last six or so months, I have been training for the full Ironman, which is going to be taking place in May the 5th here in Australia, in Port Macquarie. For most of my training, I've been using a coach. So my coach has decided how much I need to taper for my certain events that I've had throughout the triathlon season here in Australia. And now that we're only two weeks out from race day, I am balls deep into my taper. So why do we taper? One of the main reasons why we taper is so that we can have more energy on race day. So we feel less fatigued on race day, which means we have more energy to tap into. If you were to do during your last week before the race, your full maximum effort workouts, then you would be fatigued on race day. You wouldn't be able to perform at your peak level of performance. Yes, tapering is less exercise. And for some people, it may feel like you're doing nowhere near enough. But so long as your training plan so far up to the race, your whether it's 8, 12, however many weeks or however many months it is up to the race, as long as that is as good as possible, then your taper is going to just make you reach that extra level. Remember though, your race isn't made during the taper. You need to be able to be, have done the hard yards in the weeks and the months beforehand. There's no point in tapering from bugger all exercise down to even more bugger all exercise. And tapering is different for everybody. It depends on what your race you're doing. It depends on how your preparation has been going in the past. It depends on how many weeks, how many months you've had in the lead up to the race and what sort of intensity you've been going at. It depends on whether you've been injured. It depends on whether you've become sick during that time. All in all, this is a only a general guide of what a taper process could look like. Many people benefit from doing short but intense exercises during the week leading up to the race. Not necessarily on the couple of days before the race, but a few days before the race, and that gets their body really pumping, and that really helps for certain people. You want to do enough to keep up your performance and strength on race day, but not enough to make you fatigued on race day, so it's a bit of a fine balancing act. And for many people, the taper will involve dropping a lot of kilometers a lot of time. But you don't want to drop out too much. You still want your body to be ready for race day. If you don't do any exercise during your taper weeks, then you're going to turn up to race day. You'll feel sluggish. You won't feel like you're ready for the race. You'll feel underprepared. And you may actually cause yourself an injury. Remember also, if you're leading up to your A race, this is cotton wool time. This is the time where you need to be very careful not to injure yourself because you now do not have the time to recover from an injury before the race. Be careful. As I've mentioned, the length of the taper depends on the person. Some people need a little bit more, some people need a little bit less. For me, I've been getting my tapering planned out by my coach and so far, for marathons, so single, dis single discipline races, it'll be about one week's worth of taper, one to two weeks, depending on the distance, of course. The longer the distance, the longer the taper can be. Sprint lengths and Olympic length triathlons, it'll be about one week again. For your half Ironman, I tapered for about two weeks. And for this Ironman that I've got coming up in two weeks, the taper length is three weeks. So I have already been tapering for one week. That doesn't mean that I've been going at the maximum taper. That means that I have been reducing my training volume in certain ways over this last week. And it's going to reduce even further next week and even further the week after, which is the week leading to the race. A taper is typically made up of either reduced distances, reduced time, or and or reduced efforts. So at the peak of my training plan, um, about 
two weeks ago, the maximum amount of distances I was covering. So on a Monday, I was doing about a 16K run. Tuesday, 50 kilometer hard bike session. Wednesday, 32 kilometer long run. Thursday, 40 kilometer recovery bike ride session. Friday, 16 kilometer hard interval run session. Saturdays, 180 kilometer bike ride. Sundays, 90 kilometer bike ride, followed by a 12K run. And also swims, scheduled in as much as possible throughout that week, three to four times. I may or may not have actually achieved that three to four times per week. I'm not that interested in swimming. I don't enjoy that discipline nearly as much as the running and cycling. So how much should you drop your distances and efforts? So for the first week of the taper, it was only a slight taper. So instead of doing my 32 kilometer run, it was a 26K run. My distances typically dropped about 10 to 15% across the week, with some exercises staying exactly as they were. Week two is where I see the taper dropping quite dramatically. So I'm now gonna be doing about 50% of the maximum distances. So instead of the 32K run on the Wednesday, it's a 16 kilometer run. Instead of the 180K bike ride on the Saturday or Sunday, it's now just the 90K ride and only one of them, not two on the weekend. And the week before the race is where my training is really easy by comparison. So there are some efforts, but for the most part, the runs are kept around six kilometers. Bikes are an hour or less. It's nice and easy week with a couple of little efforts thrown in just to keep my blood pumping, keep my body well lubricated and ready to go. And if I was to be doing a two week taper, then I would just take the last of those two weeks. So for the half Ironman I did last year, it was the two weeks out, I went to about 50% and the week before was very similar to this. And this taper week is actually quite similar to what I typically would do on an easy week within my training. So I'll have an easy week once every four weeks. And if you can plan your training so that your easy week coincides with the taper week, then that's ideal. That means that you don't have to shift around things in your training plan as you come up to the race. Another thing to consider with your taper is nutrition. So when you're tapering, you're not gonna be doing as much exercise, you're not gonna be burning as many calories. And as such, you've gotta watch out that you don't overfeed yourself during this last couple of weeks. Obviously also don't wanna underfeed yourself. You wanna make sure that you've got a good balance. And especially in that last week leading up to the race, you do actually want to be in a bit of a calorie surplus. So you have plenty of energy on race day but not so much that you've got a gut full of food that you need to bring around with you on race day. How much do you taper for events? Let us know in the comments section down below. To check out the Ironman Australia video, I'll leave a link up here. If you want triathlon content every week from here in Australia, then hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Cheerio.